Uh, kia ora, Raph. Kia ora. Now, people associate the Greens with the climate and Labour Party with workers' rights and I guess with national, you've got farmers and business. What is the identity of TOP? That's a very good question. I think it's in the name, the Opportunities Party. So our focus is creating a world where everyone has opportunities to thrive. So we're very much future focused. We don't have a lot of tribal or partisan political baggage. It's basically what works. Is this policy going to deliver outcomes? Can we deliver those outcomes? And is it going to create a better future? That's really what we're about. So some of us have done the, I think it's the vote That's compass right, vote, thing, yeah. right? It's an online survey of around 30 questions ranging across a variety of issues, which then shows you which party's policies most closely align with your beliefs. For and I was example, talking to someone this morning, she goes, oh yeah, so I did that thing and then top was at the top. And, <laughs> That's right. And she said, but I don't really know about yeah, them. Yeah. I don't know enough about them. So what do people need to know? I think they need to know that we are focused on taking New Zealand forward together. And that is not something we're hearing a lot about in this election. And to give you an example, I was speaking to a Māori um, beef and lamb farmer from the Waikato, called me up, and he said, hey, Raf, I did this vote compass, and I came up with top, and I, then I had a look at your policies and thought, oh, that sounds pretty sensible, which is why you got us in the vote compass. I spoke to a load of my mates, they did it, and then they all want to know about top. And so I did a, a Zoom call with him and talked about he was really interested in the support for Māori farmers around biodiversity credits, uh, the way that we approached housing. And he said, actually, this is quite interesting. All my friends are interested in it. The challenge for us as a small party without a lot of money has been getting the coverage. So basically spreading that awareness. So when I looked through your policies and I thought, oh, OK, I like that, I like that, I like that. OK, where's all the Māori stuff? Yep. So... Back in the day when Gareth Morgan yep. was around and he said some things and some were not that great and his stuff around te reo yep. and yep. te tiriti, yep. even ideas around an upper house in parliament, yep. those were provocative but yep. good ideas. So yep. what's happened to all that stuff? It's still there. I mean, the, um, the treaty is part of our constitution in terms of our basic principles, um, honouring te tiriti o waitangi. It's still there. Uh, we probably, look, our focus... And we have Māori involved in our policy development. We have a Māori member on our board. Our focus is the economic opportunities for Māori, dealing with poverty. That really is our focus. There are enough people talking about the constitutional issues. Uh, we support all of that. We support the treaty principles being honoured. We support the treaty settlement process. Uh, we support co-governance at a local level, which is where we think it belongs. I would love to see some kind of iwi bank. Um, we have Fai Rawa, which is the Naitahu savings approach. So we're really focused on that because Māori are in all of those statistics for poor housing, uh, low income, and poor social and economic outcomes. That's where our focus is because I think that's where we can impact the most. One party is calling for a referendum on, on Te Tiriti. Yep. One party wants to toss out... Uh, UNDRIP, which is the Uni uh, United Nations... Um... Declaration on the Rights yeah. of Indigenous People. OK, yeah. so what's your stance on those? What's the top stance on those two? You issues? can't have a referendum on a treaty. I mean, a treaty is something that is signed at a particular point in time and needs to be enforced and adhered to. So I think that's silly. I think if we want to have a conversation about the role of the treaty in New Zealand, let's do that properly. Let's have a constitutional conversation. So I think the problem is we, we've made this as a political football, and I don't think that's very helpful because actually politicians come and go. These, these treaties are enduring and long-term. There's not going to be a referendum on the treaty because no one's going to support it because it doesn't actually make sense, and it doesn't make sense in a legal sense either. So TOP has no issue around co-governance in terms of land and resources. Mm. What about in terms of, say, the Māori Health Authority? Mm. Look, I, my preference would have been that it wasn't needed, that actually Fano Order could have delivered the same outcomes. But now that it's set up, I think you have to sort of see, let's see how it goes. And I, I know people involved in it and they'll be telling me, yep, we think this, this can work. The fact is we know that, you know, because of colonisation, because of dispossession, because of economic and poverty issues, Māori have had poor outcomes. Mm -hmm. How are we going to solve that? So if somebody comes and tells me, we think this is going to solve those problems. I'm going to go, fine, 
show me the evidence and show me how it's working. So now it's set up, let's see how it goes. Mm. Yeah, well, that makes sense. Um, so where's all your Māori candidates? Yeah, waiting in the wings. I mean, seriously, so we had... You have to remember, again, we're a small party, we're not in Parliament, and we spoke to a number of Māori candidates, and they, you know, a few got close, and they just said, oh, look, next time. And I, and I think, yeah, if we get into Parliament, I think we are going to change the conversation in terms of how we talk about politics, how we talk about governance, how we talk about delivering outcomes. And then I think you will see the Opportunities Party become a vehicle for people who feel excluded from the political process, particularly young people, and young people from all kinds of backgrounds. Now, there's no other political party that has a leader or deputy leader who is born outside New Zealand. And nearly 30% of Kiwis were actually born outside New Zealand. And a lot of them have come from countries where there's been dispossession or colonization. They're aware of those issues. And they're very like, yeah, well, we'll support whatever the appropriate thing mm. is to do. In the past, TOP has prided itself on creating policy that is evidence-based. Yep. The idea being that people will vote on policy, on, on who has got the best policy. Tell me about a policy that you've got that would excite and move me. The teal card. So the teal card is the gold card, is a gold card for young people. Oh, thank you. I feel really complimented. So, unfortunately, you and I don't get... We're probably a bit closer to the gold card <laughs> end of things. Cut! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but this is, a, this is about... We want to make an explicit statement here that we want to invest in our future generation. So we have on, on the teal card five mental health sessions, so counselling sessions a year from the age of 10. We're also supporting public transport because we want young people to get used to using public transport. So we are proposing a new civic service model. It's not a year, it's not military service. It's focused on things like community engagement, civil defence, civic literacy, conservation, the kind of stuff that is kind of key that everyone can relate to financial literacy, which is already happening, things like first aid, driving lessons, getting our kids to the point at which they can go out into the world on some kind of level playing field. Mm. Now, does that translate to young people on the East Coast and Rua Tori? Everywhere. Everywhere. They don't have a lot of public transport over there. No, public transport, that's probably a little bit of a struggle. But we do have a regional rail network. Let's get that up and running. So one of the other issues that comes up around election time yeah. all the time is law and order. Yep. There's this kind of fear that's generated and there's certain parties who, who help generate that fear. Yep. So we've got the answers. Yep. So what, what is the position of TOP in terms of law and order? Yep. So we know the social determinants of crime. I was just talking about children and prisoners. We've got kids growing up in dysfunctional families uh, with limited pathways. They're not getting support at school. It's, it's really challenging, but we need to invest in that. And if you're thinking about spending a billion dollars on a new prison for young people, that is a total waste of money. And anyone who thinks they're into efficient spending of money is barking up the wrong tree because actually we can identify the families that need help and it's much cheaper to put in wraparound service to those families. I've seen, I've done it. I've seen it work. It does work. You know, mm. within six to 12 months, you can change a family around completely. You need a youth worker, a social worker, a counsellor, it, it can be done. And it's a damn sight cheaper than wasting all of that money, just sticking kids into another cycle. I mean, have we learnt nothing from the inquiry into the abuse of children in care in state institutions? And you want us to do that again? Forget it. I mean, that's a non-starter. On the other end, there are some things we can do on the preventative side. And again, we proposed six months ago, um, 150, this is for Christchurch, 150 community constables. Is it fair to say that TOP is pro-environmentalism and pro-business? Yeah. And how does that work? How can you have those two combined? Easy. If we're going to invest in our future, we have to deal with climate change. I but think it's here now. It is. Well, yeah. you know, traditionally, National's been seen as the party of business, and it's all just about making as much money from extracting resources out of the earth, and who cares what happens to everything else? And the Greens are a bit like, oh, we hate business because they destroy the environment. Well, there is something in the middle there, and that's where we sit. And you can see the, the growth in sustainable business, Climate Leaders Coalition. They are all pro-investing in climate mitigation and climate adaptation, and we're totally behind that.
some parties are all happy with um, co-governance happening in the natural resources, yep. and they like Māori um, engaged in service delivery, but yep. they have a problem with co-governance at the top where Māori work in partnership with the Crown to determine who receives funding for services and yep. how those are delivered. Yep. Is that an issue for you? I mean, this is a conversation for the Crown, essentially, with iwi. That's an ongoing conversation. It's a conversation that has been going on for the last 180 years. A lot of it has not delivered good outcomes for Māori. That needs to change, and we're open-minded on that. So you and I might be able to have a decent conversation on that, but we've only had the treaty in history in schools last year. So, you know, it's a bit of a chicken in the egg yeah. thing. Like, how can you have a decent debate yeah. without it transforming into an argument if you're not uh, ha haven't got the basic information? Eh? Well, that, that's the problem, essentially, that New Zealand history hasn't been properly taught. Now, I grew up in England, and all you got was English history, the kings and queens of England. Hello. And it's kind of astonishing that it hasn't happened here. So that it's good that it has happened. And if you talk to young people, they look at this through a very different prism to older people. And we have to understand that our older folk are being used to a certain way of the world working and they're resistant to change and it doesn't matter what area it's in. And often I think it's an intergenerational conversation. So I often say when I, I'm visiting retirement homes, I say to them, talk to your grandchildren about this. And then they go, oh, yes, that's nice. So you, you've been going into student flats as yes. part of your campaign. Yes. What is the biggest issue that young people are telling you when you visit them in their flats? What are they most concerned about? Housing, climate change. Mm. Housing, climate change. Um, so you're standing in Elam? Island. Oh, oh, sorry. That's this is my Māori pronunciation. Yeah. <laughs> Elam. Um, how optimistic are you feeling? Yeah, really good. I'm really optimistic that we're going to do it. And we will bring a new party into Parliament. And the first new political party that is not related to a sitting MP under MMP. That's going to be pretty exciting and we need it. I think we're desperate for just a fresh voice and an infusion of new blood into that parliamentary precinct. Hmm. So would you be open to being a part of a four-party coalition? I think that's very likely. If I win Ilam and New Zealand First get 5%, which they're certainly looking like, we will probably have a national-led government working with ACT, with New Zealand First, and with TOP. And I think we will bring some balance to what looks like a, a coalition of uncertainty in how they will all work together. Could you flip to the other side as well? Could yeah, you totally. Yeah. Look, I mean, we'll work it's with... It's so flexible. We'll, we'll work with anyone. We're just focused on actually solving the problems that we face in New Zealand today. Thank you, Ref. Thank Shoda. you so much for hey, having me. Hey, all the best. Yes. Yeah, all the yeah. best.